Hello and welcome to Pekeso's launch webinar part two. My name's Kieran Fisher. I'm an account director looking after vehicle data here at Pekeso. And today we're going to be going a little bit more into the recent exciting news about the Kazoo Data Services, formerly Kazana, acquisition um, and what that means for us at Pekeso. Um, I'm going to be doing a bit of a deeper dive into the CDS offerings and what we do. Um, but if you want to learn more about the actual acquisition and what that means for customers, what that means for Pekeso, please do check out the launch webinar part one uh, with Richard Tomlinson, our managing director, and David Kelly, our commercial director. Me, myself, I have been with Pekeso now for about six to eight months. I started in the summer of last year and I actually came from CDS. I was there for a total of five years looking after their vehicle data proposition in the insurance marketplace. So I'm pretty well placed today, hopefully, to go through the offerings and explain what that means for the existing CDS customers. Um, basically, it's going to be business as usual, your APIs, your connections, your claims companion SaaS product will work as always. Um, the Pekeso customers, that means that ultimately we've now unlocked a whole raft of additional data that's available for you. So the vehicle data especially. And of course, new customers that aren't yet working with us, um, we'd love to talk to you about both the CDS vehicle data, but also of course, the Pekeso quote intelligence, insurance intelligence piece. So without further ado, I would like to go into a little bit of detail about CDS, about what they offer and how it works ultimately and what that can mean for you and your pricing or claims processes and procedures. The very backbone of the CDS offering is the valuation proposition. Um, the methodology CDS uses for that is pretty unique in that it uses live mass market data and a retail back methodology to be able to determine what that vehicle's worth is um, today ultimately. So we do that by having a kind of live consumption method. We have a crawler that looks at the whole of the marketplace every single day. And that allows us to gain a huge amount of kind of data in our data lake to be able to back valuation up. Now, what I mean by back the valuation up is one of the pros of our methodology is not only is everything vehicle specific, and derivative specific. So what I mean by that is, you type in the registration plate of a car, it's not just looking at the make model. We are going to a next level of granularity and actually consuming and considering the derivative. So a BMW 320D M Sport manual red. That's the level of detail we're going into. And because we've got a data lake of vehicles that are able to back that valuation up, not only do we provide you with a figure, of course, but we provide you with a hard evidence behind that figure. Now, obviously a point of quote, that's good to know it's there, but you're not necessarily going to be able to consume that or understand that. But actually at point of claim, we are able to provide that data to you in a meaningful way. So whether it be to the customer themselves, or whether that be to a third party, a salvage yard, the ombudsman, we can actually allow you to say, this vehicle is worth X and here's why and you have the hard evidence to back that up but interestingly <clears throat> because everything we do is actually vehicle specific not just derivative specific because of course it's working off the vrm we have a whole raft of information that is specific to that car so we build what we refer to as a timeline so everything that's ever happened to that vehicle is detailed chronologically from the vehicle's history so from the first registration date of that vehicle, the first day on the road, and almost every single thing that's happened to that vehicle throughout its life is detailed. So every single owner change, number plate change, MOT, along with the advisories, the failures, the mileages, etc. But also, referring back to what I mentioned earlier about the previous adverts being used to run our valuation proposition, we don't throw those in the metaphorical bin. We actually feed them into the timeline. So you may well be looking at a vehicle and throughout its history, between the MOTs and the, MO, uh, and the number plate changes, etc., we would have actual adverts on that car with pictures, 
prices, mileages, seller types, and full advert descriptions. And I'll get onto a little bit more about why that's interesting later. We also, of course, have vehicle provenance data, finance, um, category C, my after database, etc. And we've done a lot of work in relation to what tech is fitted to that car from an ADAS point of view. So that timeline is there and all of the data is there. So whether you're consuming that via Claimed Companion, our SaaS product, or of course, whether you're consuming that data via our RESTful JSON APIs, it's all available to you. But of course, we're conscious that the raw nature of that data, when you're using this for a pricing and underwriting point of view, can throw up some challenges. We've put a lot of work into processing that data and delivering it in a meaningful, consumable format. Now, what I mean by that is, if you want to understand the wheelbase, the engine horsepower, the body style, that's straightforward. But where we are data agnostic and we pride ourselves on looking for additional enrichment above and beyond the basic data, that allows us to combine, combine data sources and actually find additional merit and additional benefit within them and deliver those in a consumable format. So a quick example of that is the pre-mentioned advert data. In a way, the most useful part of that is the advert description, because of course, that's where you shout about, does the vehicle have any modifications? Stage two remap, coilover kit. Does it have any pre-existing damage? If it's a private sale, especially Facebook marketplace, etc., that may well tell you that it's got a curved alloy or it's got a bit of damage on the front bumper. Now, of course, that's relevant to you if that vehicle was ever involved in the claim because that damage was pre-existing. Even down to options. Where do you shout about the options that are fitted to a car? In the description. We understand that that raw text is tricky to consume at point of quote in the speeds needed, 0.1 second. So we build a tool that assesses that field and actually throws out flags to allow you to understand if a vehicle that you're currently looking to underwrite has historical modifications detailed or a certain option, keyless entry on a Range Rover for obvious reasons. And that same theory goes above and beyond that one particular data field as well. So interestingly, MOT, a lot of insurers are now consuming MOT, looking at mileages, looking at historical failures, etc. But by consuming the MOT data and combining it with owner change data and some other data fields, we're actually able to use the MOT history to determine a policyholder's risk appetite by looking at how they maintain that car. And a similar thing is done with lots of different data here at Picasso. So we've consumed the ADAS, the tech that's fitted to a car. We've spent some time processing that and delivering that in a standardized formatable way to help you understand the tech that's fitted to a car instantly. Now, as you can see by some of these customer testimonials, CDS unlocks a great deal of potential. Whether you're using that data to price more competitively, whether you're using that data to look out for fraud flags, even look out for quote manipulation, because of course, if you have the true valuation of a car, or you understand the history of a car when the owner changed last, and the customer is trying to manipulate that quote, having the most relevant, accurate data there to help you do that is beneficial. And even right down to the claim side, by having the underwriting team and the claims team using the same methodology, that of course allows for a good level of consistency across the board, but it also allows you to settle claims faster and fairer, which of course have operational benefits and cost savings, etc. And that's looping back to what I mentioned earlier around using the hard evidence of that valuation to back it up. We find that's dropped claims disputes by about 62% because you're giving the customer the evidence to back up your assessment on their vehicle. And that of course also goes for third parties, whether it be salvage yards, other insurers, ombudsmen, etc. So what's in store now, now the acquisition's happened? Um, as I mentioned, for our customers, it's business as usual. The APIs will continue to work. The claims companion logons will continue to work. Myself and Dave will be contacting you all over the next coming days and weeks to have a discussion around any questions you've got and what this means for you. 
But I think the strong message I want to get across really is the fact that we are heavily investing in maintaining that delivery and infrastructure. We're lucky that we've got a great team here who have already been given a, a very thorough handover. And I think also we will be looking to continue to strive to improve and revolutionize the insurance vehicle data industry. Um, so we're always looking to kind of process the data in different ways to derive additional benefit. We're very lucky we've got a great data science team here who are hungry to always look at kind of new exciting sources. But also we work with our clients on a partnership approach and on that basis I've been looking into connected car recently. I think that's going to be a really interesting space that we can start to transition into now that more vehicles that are hitting the road are becoming connected and it's starting to become almost a standardised approach. So watch this space, exciting things to come. As mentioned, um, myself and Dave should be in contact, but if you aren't already a CDS or Picasso customer and you'd like to learn more, or if you've got any questions generally, please do reach out to myself or Dave Kelly. Details on the screen now. And I thank you again for your time. Um, this was the part two of the webinar. Um, please do check out part one if you haven't and expect some more good content like this coming soon.